welcome back to the third uh, part of our series on St. Joseph. My name is Father Joseph Doyle. I am a Josephite priest, and I'm very happy to be able to uh, continue with this series that we're doing on St. Joseph uh, during this year of St. Joseph. Uh, the approach that we're taking is through the joyful mysteries of the rosary. And St. Joseph, in some way, was a part of each one of these mysteries. We went into the Annunciation, and his part in that, the Visitation, his journey with Mary down to Ein Karim, uh, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, and once again, another journey into Egypt, back to Nazareth, and that's where we ended uh, in the last segment of this presentation. So we're back in Nazareth where we started and the Holy Family is living there. Um, it was a small town, a small village, probably three, four hundred people living there. Uh, it's a wonderful place to visit. And um, it's up on a hill. Uh, it was a traditional Jewish village, no Gentiles living there. How do we know that? Archaeologists go in and they dig around and they can't find any pork bones. So they say, no, they, all these people were Jewish. And indeed they were, there was a synagogue, there was a well for the ladies to go up and draw water every day. They lived kind of a communal life. Uh, they were interrelated, so many of the people came to Nazareth. Uh, Joseph was there, his brother Cleopas, which we believe a strong tradition, and his family all lived together in this village of Nazareth. And what role did Joseph play in the education of Jesus? Well, Joseph and his extended family were very devout Jews, and as such, they began teaching their children the, the Jewish heritage from the time they were very small. And then the Jewish families were constantly praising God uh, in the home and in the synagogue, but especially in the home. So from the time Jesus was just a little fellow, uh, he learned his prayers from Mary. Now, we have to remember, he, he was human, like us, and all things but sin. And so he did have to learn in his uh, human nature. Um, he had to learn just like we do. He, he went to a, a school in the synagogue, he and the other children. But, but his religious education began at home, uh, as I say, with Mary teaching him his prayers. Joseph had another role in education, and that was to teach his children, in this case Jesus, about the heritage, about the law and the scriptures, and um, uh, about um, the heritage of the Jewish people. Uh, the, the mother would teach about the, um, uh, about the prayers, but it was the father of the family who usually taught the heritage of the Jewish people to their sons and daughters. So the education of, of Jesus began in the home with Joseph and Mary. And then at the, um, at the local synagogue, uh, just a short distance from where the Holy Family lived, uh, was where Jesus went at beginning probably at the age of five or six with the other children from Nazareth. Meanwhile, at the home of, of Joseph, there was uh, attached to that home uh, a carpenter shop. And uh, even today, there's a, a chapel built over that carpenter shop. I had the privilege of celebrating mass there years ago, and, it, and you can imagine uh, what an honor that was. Almost as good as, uh, as next door, uh, maybe 90, 80, 90 yards away, is the beautiful Basilica of the Annunciation. And uh, uh, many priests, when they go there taking a pilgrimage, will have the uh, privilege of celebrating Mass right in front of the, the grotto. Once again, a cave. Uh, it's interesting with uh, pilgrims who, who go on these pilgrimages, they say, Father, everywhere we go, it's a cave. It's a cave here, it's a cave there. But yes, but the, the cave was the back of the house, and that's all that's left, and especially the house where the angel appeared to Mary. 
called the Holy House, which is now in Loretto in Italy. And all you have there, the stones that were brought over to, to uh, protect them from the Muslim invasions, uh, the Anjali family brought them uh, through what used to be Yugoslavia into Italy, and it's known as the Holy House of Loretto. But it was only three sides. Uh, the front, the two sides. Why? Because the back, it was built out from a cave. And that was traditional for, you see the same thing in Bethlehem, you see it in Jerusalem, at the, uh, uh, the church of uh, St. Anne, where Mary was born, another cave. Everywhere you go, there are caves. But you have to keep in mind that it was from the cave that they built out uh, a house, small, large, whatever. So uh, that's what you had in, in, uh, in Nazareth. It's the same thing. Uh, what's left now is, is a cave, but it was the spot. Uh, hic verbum caro factum est. Here, that's what it says right in Nazareth. Right here is where the Word became flesh. It's an awesome experience to be there. So in that little home in Nazareth, there, um, Jesus learned how to be a carpenter or a tecton, a craftsman, a builder, uh, from his father Joseph. The, the trade of carpenter was uh, very well respected by the rabbis. Uh, if the rabbis got into a, a discussion and, and they couldn't come up with an answer to a theological problem, they would say, let's call in a carpenter. Let's call in a carpenter and see what he has to say about it. They had that much respect for the profession of the carpenter. And so that was life, ordinary life in Nazareth, daily life, uh, but a, a life filled with prayer constantly from morning until night. Uh, time to go to the synagogue, time to celebrate the feast days. The, 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 the life of the Holy Family was totally involved in worshiping God day and night. What a beautiful way to live. And so uh, we, we move on finally to the, uh, the, last, um, uh, the last mystery, uh, of the joyful mysteries, uh, when Jesus was found in the temple, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. Well, uh, just to give a little background on that. It was when Jesus was 12, in preparation for uh, his, it wasn't a bar mitzvah. Uh, it, there were other names for it, but bar mitzvah was not one of them. But it was a time to prepare Jesus for the time when he would become a son of the law in the local synagogue. And what, what better way to prepare Jesus for that than to take him to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. Uh, as we're told in the scripture, as was their custom. Well, I don't think Jesus had ever been before. I think it was probably just Joseph who went with the other men and maybe some families from Nazareth into Jerusalem every year for Passover. Once again, it was very expensive. And um, women didn't have to go. And poor people did not have to go if they couldn't afford the long journey and the, and the cost involved. But most likely Joseph did go every year. And this particular year, uh, Joseph and Mary uh, decided to take Jesus down to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover uh, with family members who lived in that area. Uh, it would be a great preparation for Jesus. Uh, when he finally reached the age of 13 and would uh, go to the synagogue in Nazareth and, uh, and become an official member. He would sit with the men and uh, even be called upon to, to come up and do one of the readings or to share his wisdom. But the age of 12 was a little unusual uh, to do that. So you had to begin somewhere, and it was the decision of Mary and Joseph to take Jesus to Jerusalem for the celebration. As I say, most likely it was the first time for him. And so they made the journey. Once again, they, uh, 
had to uh, make arrangements to join um, a caravan, and uh, it took a lot of preparation for that journey. It was a lot easier for Joseph to go alone, but to take your wife and your child uh, and, and protect them, watch over them on this journey, that, that was very difficult and took a lot of preparation. Uh, the route was the same, uh, down along the Jordan River into Jericho, from Jericho, joining all of the other caravans that came from the east side of the Jordan and the west side of the Jordan. Talk about traffic jams. That's why it took almost a week at that time, because the roads were crowded, and, and it was springtime. Um, it, it was not under rains were over with. Uh, you, you could see the almond trees blooming. They're, they're the first to bloom in that area. They're beautiful. And so they make their way down along the, uh, 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 the Jordan River up to Jerusalem and most likely stay there uh, in Jerusalem uh, with family to celebrate Passover with them. Uh, because they're guests, uh, Joseph would have the privilege of presiding over, over the family celebration. Or it could be the father of the family who, uh, who organized everything, went to the, to the temple and, and brought home the lamb so that it, it, it could be cooked and divided among family members who were there for this great celebration, the greatest celebration of the year for the Jewish people. Who they stayed with, we don't know, but we know that uh, every day, most likely, they went back and forth from the home of their relative, uh, from there to the temple, back and forth for worship, for sacrifice. And that's what was introducing Jesus to all of this for the first time, uh, being in Jerusalem and becoming acquainted uh, with the, uh, lit the liturgy that was going on with the the priest and the Levites singing, and it must have been an awesome experience for Jesus in his sacred humanity. I mean, he, he had, a, in, according to his divine nature, it, he was in union with the Father. But in his humanity, like us, it, he could experience an, a, a sense of awe when he went into the temple of Jerusalem. It was an awesome experience. So uh, we, have the, uh, we have the Holy Family living in Jerusalem uh, for the Passover, just for a short time, and then um, making plans to return to Nazareth. When we get back, we'll see how this story goes, one that's familiar to us about Jesus being lost and found. May God bless you. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Close to Walk Catholic Communications, thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that would, is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly we all realize that when this life journey's over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support enables us to do that. So we thank you and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you. Well, welcome back. We've been talking about uh, St. Joseph during this year of St. Joseph, and we're on the, uh, the fifth joyful mystery, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. We've already spoken about how they got from Nazareth to Jerusalem for the celebration. They experienced the celebration of Passover in the home of one of their relatives or friends, and now it's time to return to Nazareth, which means getting another caravan to go back to Nazareth, which they did. And in those caravans, uh, according to Jewish law, the, the men were in one part and the women in the other. 
Uh, and that was constant through uh, daily life in the Holy Land at, at that time. Uh, men and women did not gather, even in the synagogues, separate uh, places. And so it was true in the caravan as well. So that's why they didn't realize that Jesus was not with them. Mary thought he was with Joseph. Joseph thought he was with Mary because he hadn't reached that age yet where he had to be separated. Uh, so that's why they went on for a day's journey, and then they began to ask, well, where's Jesus? Well, I thought he was with you. Well, I thought he was with you. And so they began to ask, uh, have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Nobody saw him. And so they reached a point, and it's interesting, uh, of a little town where tradition says uh, they discovered that Jesus was missing is not far from Ramallah. Ramallah's on the map. Uh, the little town, I forget the name of it. I did stop there one time. There's not much there except the ruins of a crusader church that mark the spot, so they say, mark the spot where Joseph and Mary realized that Jesus was not with them, turned around and went back to Jerusalem and searched for him uh, for three days. So um, it's interesting how all of these places are marked out in the land we call holy. Uh, whether they're historically true or not, at least they're places of devotion. And we can stop and pray and meditate on what happened there. So they returned to Jerusalem after three days and found Jesus in the temple, not teaching the elders or the doctors, but listening to them and asking them questions. Uh, you can learn a lot about a person from the questions they ask you. And so it was with Jesus, and they were amazed. We're told in, in Scripture that uh, the, the doctors in the temple were amazed at the questions uh, uh, that Jesus asked them. And, um, but it was not Joseph who said, Son, why have you done this to us? That was Mary. Uh, Joseph gave place to Mary. It was her son, actually, not his, naturally, but really. Uh, but he let Mary say those words. Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I, see how Mary refers to St. Joseph as the father of Jesus? There's no harm in referring to Joseph as the father of Jesus. We all know he has a heavenly father. He knew it because he said, did you not know that I had to be about my father's business? We see the word father come up here in two different ways. Joseph, the father of Jesus, the one who nurtured him. We have a, we have a song that we sing in our community, dear guardian of, of Mary, dear nurse of her child. That's a, a real title for St. Joseph. He should be the patron of nurses. It simply means to nurture. And that's what he did. But here in, in the temple, uh, when they find Jesus, it's Mary who steps forward and says, Son, why have you done this? We, your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And then he replies, Did you not know that I had to be about my father's business in my father's house? So, uh, you know, we, it's interesting, we refer to the finding of Jesus in the temple as a joyful mystery. You wonder how joyful it was when, the, when Joseph and Mary heard uh, Jesus respond that way. Um, yes, they went through the sorrow of his loss, and they were glad that he was safe when they found him. But what about those words that certainly Mary tucked away in her, in her heart and St. Joseph as well. Um, the, the, the two, Mary and Joseph, were not married in a sense of, of body, but rather spirit. They were not married in the terms that, that most people, husband and wife, are married. It was a spiritual relationship that they had. And so what one felt, so did the other. And they were together on this situation of Jesus and locating him finally in the temple, uh, listening to the doctors and asking them questions. 
I wonder what the bystanders thought. <laughs> uh, they probably thought that this was a dysfunctional family. You know, because first of all, the little back talk <laughs> from Jesus, what's the matter? Did you not know I had to be in my father's house? In those days, a child could be put to death for that. A child who disobeyed or talked back to a parent could be stoned to death in, the, in a serious situation. And the wife overstepping her bounds, that was the husband's role to, to get after that child. And then uh, giving place, uh, for Mary giving uh, place with regard to Joseph for actually taking the place of the one who would reprimand the child. So we know they were not dysfunctional. We know that they were a holy family in every respect. So even though it's a, a joyful mystery, it's also a sorrowful mystery in the life of St. Joseph, in your life and in mine. The two often go together. Happiness, joy, and sadness in so many ways in our life. That was true in the life of, of Joseph and Mary. When you look at these mysteries, in every mystery that seems to be joyful, you're going to find some sorrow there. Later on, that would be developed into what we call the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ. Death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. We celebrate that every time we uh, go to Holy Mass, and especially when we receive our Lord in the Eucharist. It's the dying, rising Christ, not just the risen Christ, but his whole life, along with the life of the Trinity. It's all ours in the Eucharist. St. Joseph never uh, experienced the Eucharist. Mary did, but not St. Joseph. But he had other joys that took with him, that he took with him uh, when he died. So maybe um, a few words about the death of St. Joseph. Uh, certainly there was no joy at the death of St. Joseph for Mary and Jesus. He was probably in his early 50s when he died. And personally, I believe that he suffered greatly before he died. That's nowhere written <laughs> that I've ever discovered. But uh, theologians use a, a concept called fittingness. Fittingness. If Jesus had to suffer greatly, and Mary along with him at the foot of the cross, along with so many other times in her life, including the finding of the child Jesus in the temple. If Jesus and Mary had to suffer before they died, why not Jesus? Uh, why not Joseph? I believe he did. But how? Well, I, I don't know. But I believe it was a part of his life. And so when it came to, uh, to his death, but most likely it took place in Nazareth. And uh, we believe that uh, he was buried um, we've discovered uh, tombs, Jewish tombs from the first century in Nazareth. And St. Joseph could have been buried in one of those tombs. Uh, actually, they're located uh, beneath the, um, the convent of the Sisters of the Holy Family. Uh, is that where Joseph was buried? We don't know for sure. Uh, we do know that over one of the tombs, there was like a little chapel built. Well, who in Nazareth deserved to have a chapel built over their tomb? I think it was St. Joseph, the just man. But uh, uh, we don't know for sure. What we do know is that he died, was buried, and there are no first-class relics of St. Joseph. Now, what does that mean? Did he, was he assumed, can we assume that St. Joseph was assumed into heaven like Mary? St. John the 23rd said, there's nothing wrong with thinking that. Personally, it's, it hasn't been approved by the church, no. But I believe, personally, that, that he, once again, in fittingness, went to heaven when he died, body and soul, body and soul. Now, how did that happen? We don't know. Some scholars will go back to, um, uh, to Matthew 27.51. Now that's where after the resurrection of Jesus, we were told that there were earthquakes and that the dead 
came forth from the tombs alive. Who would deserve to be risen at that time with Jesus, and as Jesus would bring forth souls from the place of the dead into heaven? Maybe that's when St. Joseph was assumed into heaven. We just don't know. Uh, but uh, some theologians will use that scripture passage to say it's quite possible that St. Joseph was one of those souls that came forth after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What we do know is that St. Joseph is the patron of a happy death. And why do we assume, uh, or why do we give him that title? Because he died in the arms of Jesus and Mary. That's what makes our death happy. That's something we should pray for every day. We ask Mary, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Don't forget to include St. Joseph, the patron of a happy death, so that we will die like he did in the arms of Jesus and Mary. So we finished the, uh, actually finished the life of, of St. Joseph from uh, according to the, uh, the mysteries, the joyful mysteries of the rosary. Um, we talked about the life of Jesus 2,000 years ago. Now, let us just very briefly look at the life of St. Joseph and Jesus in the year 2021, when we're celebrating this year of St. Joseph. All we can do is try to develop a, a devotion to St. Joseph, leading to a spirituality of St. Joseph. Uh, we have as one of our models, uh, St. Andre Bassett, uh, the famous little brother, Holy Cross brother, uh, who started uh, to build the magnificent basilica in Montreal of St. Joseph. Uh, he certainly had a wonderful, not only devotion, but it was a total spirituality. We can pray for St. Andre Bassett to help us develop a spirituality of St. Joseph. May God bless you. Hi, I'm Father Jeff Bay from Close to Walk Catholic Communications. Thank you for being here today, and a special thanks for the support that you give us. First of all, your prayerful support we so desperately need, and also your financial support. We are donor-driven, and that would, is what keeps us on the air today. As you well know, the truth is in great demand and in very short supply, and mainstream media is not going to bring you the truth of the Gospels of our Lord Jesus Christ because that's not socially acceptable and it's not politically correct. Certainly, we all realize that when this life journey is over, we don't stand before the Supreme Court, we stand before the throne of God. Therefore, with great clarity and great charity, to pronounce the truth of the Gospel is important. Your prayers, your financial support, enables us to do that. So we thank you, and may God bring you closer in your walk with the Lord each day. God bless you.